What's up, Homo Power Addicts crew? Today's video, we are looking at da -da, wire. Woo! So, what's the big deal about wire? There's going to come times when you're working on your Jeep, your car, motorcycle, truck, whatever the case may be, that you need to splice a wire together. Or you may need to have a straight line and you got to key into it. There's so many different ways to tie wire together to form circuits. And that's what we're going to look at today. Not only am I going to show you how to tie them together, but I'm even going to prove to you which way is the strongest. Now, if that sounds like a topic you'd be interested in, then you sit right there and I'll show you how it's done. First splice so I'm going to demonstrate, we're going to use a piece of 16 gauge primary wire. This wire right here is pretty common to be used in uh, automotive applications for stereo installs, lighting, whatever the case may be. This is stranded wire. Cut that there. Strip it. Only got two ends, so we'll go up here like this. And Stranded means multiple strands inside that versus solid strand wire is one big fat wire inside the insulation jacket. So we're going to strip this one now. Now we have our two stranded wire stripped back. They're stripped approximately about three fourths of an inch or so. Get your wire side by side like that, and with a rat tail, you just simply keep twisting it, twisting, twisting it like this, and that right there gives you a good tight wrap. Now, is that strong? That's the question. What oftentimes what people do, they'll you know rat tail it together like that, and there's certain connectors you can put over the side tops right here, cramp it, and it does a pretty solid connection that way. Some people will take the wire, fold it over like this, and tape it. That's not the proper method of doing that. But the question is, how strong is that? I mean, throughout vibrations and stuff like that, it's going to be underneath the dash of your vehicle or, you know, in the engine compartment. How strong is that? We need to do a strength test to find out. And what we've got rigged up here, we've got my scale tied to the top of my table here. Got the wire tied to the hook. This measures the panel, so as I pull this wire right here, we're going to see how many pounds it takes before that wire turns loose. So this is the rat tail splice. How much does it take to pull it apart? Ah, we hit a pound. It's coming apart. Ah, right about two pounds is where it starts separating. So about two pounds of force will separate a rat tail splice. Okay, let's look at another splice. I don't remember what this splice is called. If you guys remember... Or know it, whatever, put it down in the description. I don't know what it's called, but I don't use it. Because I call it the useless splice. Why do I call it useless? Simple. Unless you solder this particular splice or joint together, it is absolutely useless for strength. And notice on my crimpers here, see the little guide right there? I'm making sure that each one of my cutting actions here is right there so I keep all my lengths equal all right, get up here. so now at this point what you want to do is kind of separate your strands a little bit then we take our strands and feed them in toward each other like so and when the ends of your strands here meet the insulation that's where you stop and take your finger and grip the wire together and start twisting your wires together. Now the upside of this particular splice or joint, whatever, had to change batteries in the camera. And like I said, like I started to say, the uh, upside to this particular splice right here, it's a nice, small, confined little package here. So whenever you do solder, which most of the time, if I'm doing a lot of heavy electrical work or building wire harnesses, whatever the case may be, I solder my joints together because I don't like anything coming apart. So, if you solder this right here, it basically becomes one solid piece of wire. And then, of course, you put your heat shrink over top of this to insulate it and keep any kind of uh, debris from getting inside there, water debris or corrosion, whatever the case may be. So, as long as you solder this joint, it's strong. But by itself, eh, it's pretty well useless. But how useless? Let's find out. 
Okay, we got our handy dandy little scale set up here. And I just tied a little loose knot right there because I don't think I'm going to need a very strong knot for this. Ready to pull? Let's do this. We got our handy dandy little scale set up. I've got a knot tied right there. I had to shorten it up a little bit. So let's start pulling and see how far we make it. I feel slipping. 0 0.86, 0 0.9, 0.95. Ooh, we made it to a pound. I didn't expect that. It's going to break by any time though. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. We're going to make it to two. We're going to make it to two. Nope, we ain't do it. Now, very strong, huh? But if you solder it, because one solid piece of wire, so therefore you get your strength if you solder it. Now, this time we're going to do the Western Union splice. Cross your wire the middle of the copper. Take this one, wrap it like this, and pull tight on your wire as you wrap it. You want to start in the middle like it, it ends your wrap right there at the insulation. Now do this one the opposite direction. This is a pretty stout little wrap right here. And there you go. You can see how nice tight package that is. Now, if you was to solder that, you'd have a super strong joint because obviously it would make it all one solid piece. But just by itself, how strong is it? Well, let's find out. Okay, I had to shorten my wire up a little bit. Uh, I almost said wire. I like my country coming out. All right, I had to shorten my wire up a little bit to keep it inside frame. We're going to hook it on our scale here. This could be interesting. This right here is actually the type of wrap that's used the most common. Turn our scales on and let's pull. Point eight, point nine. Wow. Ten. I bumped just over ten before it turned loose. Actually impressive. I didn't think it would hit that high. Interesting. I like that. Now let's do a Y splice. This is when you got to let the wire that's running underneath your dash or inside, under your engine compartment or wherever it may be. And it has power to it, but you need to tap into it for another accessory, whatever that may be. Cut you a section out. Uh, see, right? I got a little bit of fray right there where I cut the wire. That's not a big deal. Take a lay that wire down this way, lay this one down this way. Give it a little twist, and that will help keep those frays in check. Yeah. So now what we're going to do with the Y splice, we're going to take this with the stranded the strands hanging out like this, wrap it on like this, make a T over it, or a Y if you want to lay it over this way, but then we'll take this and start wrapping it. And as you're doing it, take the strands, hold it against your fingers really tight, and take the fingers and pull. Like right now, where the strands are pointing outward like this, I'm pulling the wire out this way as I'm wrapping it. Therefore, it creates a good, tight wrap. And see, this way, I'm pulling outward on it. As I come around, now I'm pulling down. I'm pulling toward me as I come around. That makes for a good, tight wrap. Also makes for a very good, low-profile wrap. And there it is. Ain't that just pretty? Now that is a good, solid, strength wrap. If you solder that, it's going to be just totally awesome. That's what it'll be. But I say that it's a good, strong wrap. How strong is that? Hmm. We must test this. Now we have our Y splice tied to the table. I've got it anchored up here to the top and coming back to the corner here. We're going to take our scale. Hook it in there and turn it on. 
Are you ready? Let's start pulling and see how much it takes to pull the wasp wasp part. Two pounds. Four pounds. Five pounds. I'm impressed. I uh, start to come undone. Six pounds. Seven. I bump seven. It bumped seven before it finally turned loose. That actually is surprising. I really expected it to pull apart faster than that but it's all in how you wrap it if you just take and wrap this around like it's right here first you know just wrap like that then wrap it around the wire it's not as strong that much I can tell you I've never measured the pull but I can tell you it's just not as strong but taking the strands and keeping them frayed out like this and flat as you wrap it around the wire here the wires will actually wrap these will wrap over this obviously but these will also wrap over themselves. So it's a much stronger wrap by keeping them frayed out like that and wrap them around this. You know what, for kicks and giggles, let's try it. I'm gonna twist this, then wrap around that. Okay, we got this wrapped around there. Let's wrap it around here. Again, using the same method, I'm pulling the wire, keeping it tight as I wrap it. Your fingers tend to I want to unwrap a little bit as you pull it. There we go. Y spot set up. Take our scale. Take our scale. Dang it. Took on. There we go. Ready? And let's see. Let's move our camera just a little bit. Because I want to zoom in a little tighter so you guys can see this and the scale both. So I'll move my camera just a little bit so it keeps it frame. Alright, ready? Let's do this. Pull. Look at that. I'm at three pounds. It's starting to unwrap. Four pounds. Five. Six. But it's unwrapping. There you go. So it made about 6.8 pounds, I think. So I have to look at the video here in a bit to confirm that. And now we're going to do a knotted tap joint. Now with the knotted tap joint, we're going to take this wire here. And I'm going to start out with a brand new piece of wire here. Because the other one where we did just the Y splice, you know, after all the tests and stuff, you know, it damaged some of the copper here. So I want it to be an even fair test amongst all the different splices. So start out with a new piece of wire here. And notice I'm leaving this back just a little bit. Take a wrap that around once. And notice I'm on the back side of the wire we're splicing in. Bring it over top of this one like such. See it's coming across. Now we're going to wrap it around our main run wire, our main powered wire. And again, take your finger, if you squeeze it tight as you pull it, it's going to make it wrap good and tight. So what happens is your spliced wire here forms a loop around your main run right here. This is your main power wire that you're tapping into. So by forming that loop right there, it should be a much stronger wrap. Even though you got less this way, I would assume that's much stronger. Is it? Is it? Let's find out. We have our scale set up. Let's turn it on. Let it zero out. Let's pull. Seven pounds. Eight pounds. Nine pounds. 10 pounds. Uh oh, I feel like I'm undone. Uh, 10.3, I think, is the last number I've seen it. 
but I was looking kind of over at the wire too, watching it unwrap as I was watching the numbers too. So I think it's like 10.3 before it turned loose. That was a cool little experiment. Thanks for stopping by checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't because you don't want to miss a single one of these cool tutorial videos I put out. Now this video will demonstrate how to tie all this wire together. The video that's going to follow up for this one is different ways to protect your wire. You're going to have electrical tape, you're going to have heat shrink, and that's going to be coming up soon. Which one's the strongest? Well, I think it's going to be obvious, but we will find out. So until the next video, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.